Moderator, it is my pleasure to introduce to the General Assembly Dr. George Sabra. Dr. Sabra is Professor of Systematic Theology and President of the Near East School of Theology in Beirut, Lebanon, otherwise known as NEST. He received his Bachelor of Philosophy from the American University in Beirut, a Master of Divinity from Princeton Theological Seminary, a Master of Arts in Medieval Studies from the Pontifical Institute at the University of Toronto, and a Doctorate of Theology from the University of Tübingen, Germany. In the Middle East, Dr. Sabra is known as a theologian, teacher, preacher, and church leader. He brings clarity, openness, faithfulness, and a concern for the truth and for the future of theological education in the Near Eastern region. He possesses a wealth of knowledge of the history of Christianity in the Middle East and a richness of Reformed mm -hmm. theology taught, preached, and lived out. He believes strongly that Christianity, with its history and theology, has the power of transforming people and societies. On the occasion of his appointment as Nest President in 2012, he stated, and I quote, Serving society in a seminary primarily involves preparing men and women who dare speak truth to power. In these troubled times of the Middle East, the task of speaking and doing the truth in society, in public, is more urgent than ever. It is not the call of the church simply to heal wounds, console the oppressed, and call for peace. We are called to speak up in the face of those who cause the wounds, to challenge the oppressors, and shame the destroyers of peace. Theological education aims at transforming the world and not simply transferring us to another world." End of quote. It is clear that Dr. George Sabra embodies this call. As a former student of his, who now lives here in Canada, has said, Dr. Sabra is the humble giant who is a rare currency in the Middle East and a treasure for all circles of Christians around the world. Moderator, it is my honor to present to you in this assembly, Dr. George Sabra. Moderator, it is indeed an honor to be invited to the General Assembly of the Presbyterian Church in Canada, and it is a privilege to be asked to address a word of greeting to all of you gathered here today. I must confess this has been a great learning experience for me, uh, watching and following how things are done here, but I must also confess that if I had to take a final exam on Monday on process here, I would fail drastically. <laughs> I come to you from the small country of Lebanon in what is known as the Middle East, and I bring you greetings from the Near East School of Theology, an interdenominational Protestant theological seminary that was founded by Presbyterians in the 19th century, 1869 to be specific. Our seminary serves the Protestant churches of Lebanon, Syria, Jordan, Palestine, Iraq, Iran, and Armenia. And it has graduated the overwhelming majority of pastors, Christian educators, and Christian leaders in the Protestant churches in the region. One of the founders of the ecumenical movement in the Middle East, and a pioneer in the Christian-Muslim dialogue and relations, the Near East School of Theology has a wide network of relations and partnerships with churches worldwide, including the church, the Presbyterian Church in Canada. I believe our relationship goes back to 1985 when contacts between our seminary and were initiated with the Reverend Glenn Davis, at the time the PCC Secretary for Overseas Relations. Over the years, PCC has been a faithful supporter of our School of Theology, both materially and in terms of personnel. Our seminary will never forget how the Presbyterian Church in Canada seconded Dr. Ted Severns 
to serve as professor of Old Testament, and how both Ted and Betty came to Beirut in the midst of the civil war in Lebanon in the late 1980s and served our institution faithfully. At a time when many Lebanese were leaving Lebanon to seek security and safety elsewhere, a dedicated Presbyterian couple from Canada came to be with us, shared our difficulties and hardships, and helped us carry on our mission of theological education. For this and many subsequent contacts, visits, and support, continuing until today, we are truly grateful. But I also stand before you today as a Christian from the Middle East, whose region is being emptied of Christian presence. The Christians in that region of the world which gave the world the Bible, in which Christ was born and lived, died and rose again, are in danger of becoming extinct in some countries at least. The events in Iraq, the developments in Syria, the non-resolved Palestinian-Israeli conflict, the surge of religious extremism and fundamentalism, the increasing sectarian and confrontation between factions of Islam itself, Sunnis versus Shiites, all of these are contributing to the depletion of the Christians from the region. Of course, others, non-Christians, are also suffering. But we are more at risk because our numbers are smaller to begin with and because in some places Christians are targeted because they are Christians. What is, what is at stake is not just the fate of human beings. It's not just religious tolerance. It's not just human rights. All of these are very important and very worthy causes. But what is really at stake is witness to the truth. What is at stake is the nature and identity of God. On top of all the social, economic, and political factors that contribute to the conflicts in the Middle East, there is also the religious factor. The Middle East is a region where religion is dominant. It is a main donor of identity. On top of and in addition to all of the other factors and causes of struggle and strife, there is also the question, who is God? That plays a central role. If Christianity disappears from the Middle East as an active and living presence and witness, there will, there will be no one left to witness to God who is neither a general of a holy army nor the chief of a tribe fighting for survival among other tribes and confiscating land and expelling inhabitants out of their homes and territories, but a God who loves all and who gives God's life for all. If Christian witness disappears from that region of the world, the gospel of love, peace, and reconciliation will disappear too. To remain and to witness to the gospel in our lives, in our words and deeds and institutions, we also ask for your support. We know from our experience of the past that we as Christians of the Middle East cannot on our own remain and fulfill our mission without the support of the worldwide church, especially the church and the Christians of the West. Stay related to us. Stay aware of what is happening to us. Encourage us and support us morally, spiritually, materially. And above all, keep us in your prayers to God Almighty, the Lord of our lives and of all history, in whose love and mercy our ancestors, our parents and grandparents have always trusted. For those of us who choose to remain, we cling to the word of God as spoken by the prophet Habakkuk. Though the fig trees do not blossom, nor fruit be on the vines, the produce of the olive fail, and the fields yield no f food, the flock be cut off from the fold, and there be no herd in the stalls, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. God bless your meeting, and may all that you think, deliberate about, decide, and do 
be to the glory of God and to the good of our fellow human beings. Thank you. I had the great privilege of seeing you in your context and appreciating what your students said about the humble giant that you are. And you have made a profound influence on students and the region. And please know that our prayers will continue to be with you. And we give you this little gift as a token of our appreciation for you being here. Thank, Thank you, you so much. much. And God Thank bless you. you.